Okay, so let's take a look at study design. Uh, there's usually two types of studies that can uh, be performed. Uh, one would be an observational study, and one would be an experimental study. Okay, uh, the difference is observational is just observing. Uh, how people react or recording some information without applying any kind of treatment. Um, uh, experimental uh, study would involve some type of treatment, usually to maybe half of the group, and they would compare it to a, uh, another uh, half called the control group that wouldn't get a treatment, and they would try to determine if there were a difference. So an experiment is generally a little bit more complicated um, than something like an observational study. So let's take a look at this example. It's kind of a simple example, but what we want to be able to do is identify the type of study, and we want to know why uh, we are choosing that type. So a doctor developed a test to measure boredom tolerance. He administered it to 100 adults. The possible scores were 1 to 9, with 9 indicating the highest tolerance of boredom. Okay, so identifying this, I'm going to have to go with observational study for this. And the reason is the test isn't necessarily a treatment. First of all, everybody's um, getting the test, so there is no control group. And, uh, you know, it, they, they did give the test to all 100 adults. Uh, and the other reason is uh, it's not that much of a treatment. It's more like a survey, uh, and it's just the form for observing your uh, possible scores of um, 1 through 9. So, in this case, don't confuse the test as a treatment. It's more like a survey, and a survey is definitely, a simple survey uh, answering responses is definitely an observational study. Okay? So, uh, what is the variable of interest? Well, it's the level of um, boredom tolerance that they're measuring. It's um, not the people. The people are the subjects, but they're not the variable of interest. We're really basically measuring the values 1 through 9. So it would be the uh, tolerance level okay, and it's the values 1 to 9. Okay, what are the advantages and disadvantages of this uh, study? Well, they didn't really go into uh, much detail about what the test involved, um, so that's kind of hard to determine if that's a good test or a bad test. Um, and they didn't really say how they were acquiring a score 1 to 9 either. But in my opinion, my first thought is the size of the sample is only 100 adults. I'm not sure what conclusions you can draw from such a small sample. So size of sample might be one disadvantage and that's a disadvantage. Um, also it's only adults where I can see maybe children having a different level of boredom. Okay? So, there you go. As far as advantages, I don't, don't really see any other than maybe he has a good way of measuring. At least he has a score. So let's do one advantage. And let's consider uh, clear values. One, two, nine. But that's about the best um, 
I can get for an advantage out of that. Uh, and so there you have it. Um, study design, observational versus experimental design. Thanks for watching.